Hey everyone, and thanks for joining the platform Super Session. My name is Adi, and I'm the product manager of the Supersonic platform. Today, Mayan and I will guide you through our Supersonic platform. We have two solutions that we want to share with you today. One is the prototype solution, we also mentioned it in the previous session, and also we have the live game solution, which is the solution we are giving to developers who published apps with us. Let's start with the prototype solution. So first, what it is, this is the place for you game developers to start testing your games with Supersonic. All you need to do is go to supersonic.com, submit your game there, and once you gain access to the platform, you can submit your game in the platform and start testing it. Obviously, once the test is created, you're able to log into the platform and see the test performance. Today, I'm not gonna walk you through the actual platform, but I wanna share with you guys our vision when we started building the, pla the platform. It was about two years ago, and ever since we released the first version, we are constantly adding features, changing the technology, and making it the best platform in the hyper-casual industry. First off, user-friendly and self-served, so Guys, we can talk a lot about user experience, design, and UI, and we did put a lot of effort in having like a smooth flow just for you guys, but the main thing in here is that the platform is fully self-serve. It means that once you submit a game, get an approval from, from Supersonic, you have the all flow to yourself. You are in the driver's seat, we know you have a lot of things on your hand, a lot of things to do, and we wanted to give you the ability to create the marketability test yourself. So it means you submit a game, get an approval, then you have all the steps you need to pass in order to create the test, and everything is on your hands. Of course, at any time, if you have any questions, things go wrong, you get a technical issue, you can always reach out to us. We have a whole team of self-serve managers that are waiting to assist you. All you need to do is click, on the chat bubble within the platform and one of our managers will be happy to assist. Second, knowledge sharing. You guys have the games, we have the expertise, but our mission is to help you guys become better developers. This is why we built a lot of best practices articles and knowledge centers, tips within the platform and everything is actually for you to see in the platform. We want you to use our tips become better developers, submit more games, and this is how the Supersonic team is doing it. I wanted to give you guys a specific example from the platform. This is actually something that came up from developers who worked with us. We got a lot of support tickets about creating creatives for the marketability test. A lot of people complain that they don't know how to do it, that they don't know which scenario to record, they get some technical issue, issues doing it, so we just sat together, we have creative experts, we have UA experts, we all sat together and understood that we can help you guys <laughs> with a simple guide of creative, so this is exactly what we did. We took live creatives from our hit games and we shared it with you as a guide within the platform. Next, cutting edge technology to test your game's marketability, so Obviously, you guys as an audience, you're game developers, we can talk about technology a lot, and this is something that we put in our minds in our day-to-day. -day. We have a team of technologies, uh, sorry, techno technological people who put effort on, on a daily basis to give top-notch technologies within the platform. We also have complex data solutions. Man will also share it when she will display the live games platform in order for you guys to log into the platform and see the data in real time. We actually consider ourselves as a tech and data oriented game publisher and this is something we are putting a lot of effort into. We also understand that testing only on one UA channel isn't enough, so we just added another UA channel as we already mentioned in the previous session. Last but not least, and personally, I think that this, is, this was something that was very, very important to us. We wanted to give 
a fair chance to each hyper casual developer that wants to work with us. As I said, all you need to do is go to supersonic.com, submit your game, and once you gain access to the platform, everything is free of charge. It means that you guys can submit as many as games as you want. You can like think of it as a risk-free process. Like if it has failed, you can always submit another game and try testing another game and everything is on us and we want to help you become better developers so please guys if you still don't have access to our platform please go now to supersonic.com and submit your game i really really hope to see you there and this is it guys uh, for the prototyping uh, section of the platform now i'm gonna give the mic to mayan to walk you through the live game solution Thank you, Adi. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Mayan, and I'm leading the product monetization department here in Supersonic. I hope you guys are ready, because I'm about to present you the most advanced hyper-casual solution there is in the market today. It literally, re literally, represents, <laughs> it literally represents Supersonic DNA, which is the white box approach. Transparency into the performance of your game in the publishing phase. Sophisticated database dashboard with extensive insights in order to get the best decisions for your game. So, why transparency? Transparency first for the sake of transparency. It's your game, your work. Most of the publishers in the market today are working on a black box mode, which means you're kind of blind to actually what's happening in your game. And by that we believe that two crucial things happen. First, we don't believe in this type of relationship. With our developers, we want to be 100% transparent, and we want to maximize the potential of your game together. Second reason, and probably the most important one, is that the black box approach is literally preventing you from becoming the smarter developer you can be. By not being 100% a part of the publishing phase, you're missing the opportunity to become a better developer and build a better game each time. And we want you to build a better game each time. So in order to build a better ecosystem, we decided to take the white box approach into the publishing phase. The power of our solution is super duper granular database KPI, easy to digest. Already calculated all the main insights for you, and it covers all three layers of analysis, the user, the ads, and the revenue. The live game solution literally holds the whole LTV funnel, starting from the player engagement, which relates to retention and playtime, the ads engagement, which relates to mostly impressions from interstitial and rewarded video, and of course, the ARPU, the top of the pyramid, the ARPU that contains mostly player ad and, and ad engagement. So let's start with the player analytics. We have retention and playtime, and you already know it, so it's not that interesting. But what we did in Supersonic is that we invented a new KPI called APAPU, average playtime per user, when it basically takes into account both retention and playtime. APAPU, we can also call it average, play average lifetime uh, uh, for a user. So what are we doing? We're taking up the playtime and we're taking into account retention. Let's look here, for example, on September 10th. A user who were born in September 10th and played until day seven played a total amount of 3,200 seconds. So his lifetime playtime is 3,200 seconds. So this is basically the balance between retention and playtime. Now, I'll explain it to you even better by a simple example. On the prototyping typing phase, you're testing your game. And in the version that you tested, you get really good retention and quite low playtime. Then you test another version of your game, and you get an amazing playtime, but quite low retention. Which version is better? Which one you should go out with? What's more important, retention or playtime? I don't know, and you don't know, but Apapu knows. Because Apapu is basically the, the, the answer. This is the foundation when we are pouring ads on it. So the higher the Apapu, the higher is your LTV potential. So the Apapu is the base of your entire LTV. Now, let's talk about ads analytics. And for that, we invented another KPI called FSF, which stands for full screen frequency. This KPI is an indicator 
of how well we are converting our game playtime, yeah, the game Appapu, into ad impressions. It shows me the interval of showing ads in the game. For ads are shown in full screen, which is interstitial and rewarded video. So the lower your FSF is, the more RV and interstitial are being shown throughout the player session. Now, I have to say, FSF, it's not a KPI I aspire to optimize. It's literally a KPI that helps me identify missed opportunities within the interstitial trigger point, for example, interstitial timer, and rewarded video strategy. So if my Apopu, sorry, so if my FSF is high, I know that I need to tackle my ad units, my interstitial and my rewarded video. Now that we talked about ads analytics, we have to talk about the show rate, which is basically the engagement rate for rewarded video. How many users are engaging with at least one RV a day out of our totally da total daily active users? Here in the graph, you can see the RV placements you have in the game and what's performing good and what's performing bad. Now, why is it so important to optimize rewarded video? This ad unit, unlike interstitial, is a user-initiated ad unit. Interstitial can be interfering in the game flow and quite annoying, but rewarded video is something that I choose to engage with. And therefore, optimizing this ad unit specifically provides a better eCPM, a good engagement rate, and a better user experience. Now that we talked about the player analytics, retention, playtime, and apopu, and we learn a bit about the ads engagement, FSF, and rewarded video, we can finally talk about the ARPU. The ARPU is the average revenue per user. And besides looking at it in a cumulative way, we can also see the piece of the pie of each ad unit out of our total ARPU, yeah, interstitial, rewarded video, and so on. But again, that's not the cool part. The cool part and the most important thing you need to do, and it's a major game, it's a major game changer when analyzing your game metrics, is the option to look at the ARPU and basically most of our game, most of our KPIs according to media source. Now, why is it so important to understand that? Let's say on the prototype type in phase, when you're testing your game, you test it in one, two media sources max, and the environment is pretty clean. You get 40% users from Facebook and 60% organic. That could be your daily ARPU. But when moving to the publishing phase, the daily ARPU is a combination of totally different complexity of users. We get users from Facebook, from Google, TikTok, Snapchat, Unity, Iron Source, you name it. What's important to understand is that different media sources bring different type of users, and those users behave differently. So imagine you're opening your game and you see one of your KPIs went down or low, went high or up, doesn't matter, and you think it's related to your game performance only, where in fact, it might be related to the user acquisition trend. Some of the users we brought generating lower LTV, which is totally fine because we're probably paying lower CPI on it. So it's really important to take conclusions according to media source. Also, it's very important, if you want to know if your game is better today than a week ago, you must look at the media source. That way, you will compare apples to apples and not apples to oranges. Another thing and another sneak peek into the user acquisition trend is the top creatives, where we're able to give you the best creatives in your game, what's generating the highest amount of users. And it's a really interesting thing because in some cases, and we already did it in some of our games, a really good creative can be a new feature inside the game. So being able to understand what is the best creatives in your game can give you sense of creativity and initiate new things in the game, and it's really, really important. And of course, the A-B testing page, which is my favorite page, basically. When we're moving to the publishing phase, we're constantly doing everything we can in order to maximize the game potential in ARPU. So we're A-B testing a lot. In this page, you can see how many users are assigned to your A-B test, to each variant. You can see how each variant performs according to all the relevant KPIs I just showed you, retention, playtime, APAPU, FSF. And the best part, we have the summary table, which actually tells you how much each variant improved the ARPU according to the default setup of your game. And of course, you can also filter it by media source. Last but not least, the, all, the reason we are actually here for, besides working in the best field possible and playing games all day, it's the finance page. Transparency into your game earnings, your profit share, how much you're going to make, not only to wait to the invoice at the end of the month, you can see the current run rate, the month to date, the lifetime, the monthly overview, and also break it down per OS. 
that's it, guys. Um, let's get start. We're going to take a few minutes and start the Q&A. See you soon. Cool guys, welcome back, and we are uh, back to the Q and A uh, part uh, according to the for both platforms. Our prototyping platform, where you can test your prototype and see its marketability power and start the iteration process, and of course the live games platform, which is the active platform once you publish the game. Um, let's start with the with the with the the one that we all predicted. Kindly uh, tells a bit more about Apapo. Okay, um, Apapu, basically think about it as the foundation, the bottom of the pyramid, the reason for a game to be existing is of course retention and playtime. Now, when you're releasing a game, when we're testing a game, sometimes the balance between retention and playtime is not even. Obviously, you're not, you doesn't mean you're gonna have the best retention and the best playtime. But it doesn't really matter because the combination of them is what generates the average lifetime, yeah, the average lifetime per user, the playtime. So the Apopo is the foundation of where we can start pouring ads and optimizing our game. Um, I can even did I add, miss anything? No, I, I, I think you, you answered it great, but, I, but I'll, I'll, I'll add a few sentences. I would say the, the following. Up until we came up with this Apopo, which is a term that we invented a couple of months ago, <laughs> we actually measured two different KPIs in order to understand how potential the game is from LTV perspective, right? We're measuring retention and we're measuring playtime. And by the way, when you say retention or playtime, you can say retention. Retention day one, retention day two, right. retention day three, retention day four, or playtime day zero, playtime day one. So it was very, very hard to understand what is our benchmark. Let's say that uh, we say, okay, we have a, a benchmark of 45% day one, right? This used to be the benchmark for hyper casual, let's say a year ago, and 10% day seven, right? You're ignoring, first of all, what's happening between day one and day seven. If day two or day three are stronger or weaker, you're just ignoring it because it's not part of your retention day one and retention day seven. On top of that, you're ignoring playtime, which can be as important as retention, in some cases even more important, right? Let's say that you have two games, or let's say that you are running an A-B test during the prototyping phase. In A, you have better retention numbers, on B, you have better play times numbers. Which version is better? Which version should you adopt, A or B? How do you even compare a better re retention numbers to a better uh, play time numbers? This is why we came up with Apapu, which solves these this two problems. First of all, Apapu is a combination of retention and play time, so it takes into consideration both of them. Second, Apapu is a cumulative KPI, meaning that Apapu day seven is not looking only on your retention day seven or retention day one and day seven or playtime day seven. Apapu day seven is the result of playtime day FS1, uh, playtime day zero, <laughs> one, FS is in Hebrew. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, retention day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is why we, we move to speak about Apapu. And for us to predict the LTV or to move into the soft launch phase where we are adding ads and monetization, is to meet an Apapu day seven KPI. And I don't really care if it's because you have a crazy high day one retention or crazy high day zero playtime uh, 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 numbers whatsoever, as long as your day seven cumulated playtime is strong. Uh, this was about Apapu. Um, Nadav invented Apapu. In <laughs> case you were wondering the passion <laughs> about it. <laughs> Next also question. <laughs> no, that's Next true. Ca question is from Gabriel, which is also the developer of uh, Hi, our uh, game Hide and Seek, which is one of the most successful games. April last year, almost a year and a half ago, still in the top, still making significant profit every day. So great. What is the FSF reference you are using to know whether to increase or decrease the ads frequency? Nice. So the benchmark for SF FSF, and it depends on the game, could be, let's say, around 80 to 100 and 120 seconds. So this is the benchmark for us. If we see higher than that, then we know we might need to either tackle even the level entry. Yes, sometimes long level end is preventing us the opportunity to show interstitial or rewarded video. So we can tackle it by showing more interstitial, sometimes even in the middle of the level. We can tackle it by increasing our RV placements to make players engage with more RV. 
So when I see I have an, an, an FSF around above 120, I know I need to start tackling that. It could be this, could be also the level end or the game itself. And maybe to add, to add something that Mayan said during mm -hmm. her lecture, but I want to make sure that all of you digested it. FSF and APAPU, once the game is published, are not a goal for us, right? We are right. optimizing only toward maximum LTV or maximum ARPU, right? I don't care if FSF is 90, 150, or 200. I don't have a goal for APAPU. What I do have is, a, 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 or, or to FSF, FSF helps me to understand what am I doing well or not and to challenge my current strategy. So if FSF is super high and I'm not showing a lot of uh, uh, interstitial or I'm, so, I'm showing full ad, full screen ad every 200 seconds only, then we should tackle it an A-B test, mid-level interstitial, to see if it's improved the LTV and the ARPU or not. But bottom line, we are picking the winning variant on an A-B test or we are optimizing our monetization toward maximum LTV, not specific FSF and not specific APAPU. I don't mind damaging my APAPU or my FSF if my LTV is going higher because this is the uh, beginning of the business model of, 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 of our business. Um, cool. Best playtime nearby and retention. Yeah. You take it. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if there is best one, but uh, I would say that I think that these days having a retention of 45% and more on iOS will be very, very good, very, very strong. A year, year and a half ago, it was 50, but uh, today it's a bit harder to gather. Users are moving between games more often. So I would say 45% on iOS will be a very strong KPI. Playtime. It depends, and, and, and by the way, another important note, you should differentiate between KPIs before adding ads and after adding ads. Once we are adding ads, KPIs will go down for sure, right? This is life. You are adding interstitial, you are adding, usually interstitial, not reward video. Retention will go down, playtime will go down. This is why on the prototyping phase, we want to maximize retention and playtime before we start messing the data and hurting it. But I will say that, before adding ads, having 45% day one, having 7% day seven retention, having more than uh, 1,000, 1,200 seconds of daily playtime will be a good indication. Again, we care about APAPU. If you have APAPU day seven of 2,500 or more than that, you are probably in a good direction to build a very solid LTV. And if the CPI is there, it means a big business. Um, what average ROI you expect? Um, so ROI is also a, a, a hard question because ROI day 30, ROI day 60, what we're optimizing the game and the user acquisition during the, the publishing phase is toward maximum profit. Maximum profit is changing from time to time and from game to game. Sometimes a lower ROI, which means better CPIs and more competitive CPIs, more installs, will generate more profit. Sometimes higher ROI will generate more profit. It changes between games and between a, a, a period of time when the comp competition is harder or, or weaker. We are changing our user acquisition optimization, and it's not related to this session. It's the user acquisition part, and this is what's responsible for ROI according to what maximize the profit. What new features are you guys working on the dashboard, if it's not a secret? <laughs> um, <laughs> so it actually is a secret. Tell them. <laughs> yeah, again, we, we don't like to reveal all our plans because, because it's part of our competitive advantage and we believe that our platform is, is, is the best product in the market and we are doing it by working very, very hard to build new features and then present them. But I can say that in the next couple of months, or even in, in, in the next quarter, you can expect on the prototyping phase to have a much, much, much more sophisticated marketability indication, right? If today, as we said before, it's very Facebook CPI based, uh, we are building something that is much broader and going to take many things into consideration. And on the live games, we are adding many, many more KPIs uh, to monitor, including 
uh, elaborating more on the user acquisition side and on the creative side, which is just the beginning with one page that we have uh, uh, today. Um, how long do we have? Two minutes. Two. Um, if day one is 30%, day seven is 5%, CPI is 50 cents, <laughs> Playtime is 1,000 seconds, <laughs> there's potential to continue to work on it. So, so it's very hard to answer a, a, a such question. First of all, I'm, I'm missing the Apapu. So if you are using supersonic platform, you would have the Apapu because I don't know what is your day two, day three, day four, day five playtime. I don't know what is the other retention numbers. Um, but in general, I would say the following. 50 cents CPI on Facebook today, right? A, a couple of months ago, it was a disaster. Today, 50 cents uh, uh, CPI is not that good, but maybe. And what we would do is we would test the marketability power across other channels in this phase to understand if this 50 cents CPI on Facebook translates into a strong marketability or not. On top of that, it really depends how strong you worked on the retention numbers. 30% day one is a bit weak, definitely for 50 cents CPI. Uh, but if it's only the first few we weeks you are working on the prototype, you probably can lift it to 40 plus, and then it makes sense. It also depends if it's Android or iOS. Bottom line, it's very hard to answer simple answers, and every game is a different story. And what we do at Supersonic is we are looking at any game from a specific end game. We are looking at each specific characteristics, and we make decisions upon it, and we are open to discussing with the developer, and we try to make all decisions mutual for both sides. We are out of time. Thank you so much. More questions to come. We are Thank moving you. to the next session. Thank you. Ooh, you can skip thanks, everyone. to the next one.